<clears throat> Unacceptable! With these words, Earl Lemongrab Bubblegum of Ooh, son of Princess Bonabel Bubblegum of Ooh, would forever be remembered as one of the weirdest personalities in Adventure Time. Like many other characters in the series, Lemongrab is one of those characters that has a really tragic life and backstory. He was born out of a experiment's gone wrong and was then left by his mother, that's PB, to live a life of solitude. It was only when PB turned young again that he entered the story and basically took over the kingdom. His governing style, unlike PB, consisted mostly of imprisonment and screaming, a behavior that should continue even later on in the series. While Lemon Grab doesn't appear often in Adventure Time, it is hard not to remember any of the episodes because the character is so extremely loud and I think he's annoying on purpose. Honestly, he's just like me! For real! For real! Over the years, people have made the connection that certain characters are trying to represent certain things in the real world. For example, PB might be an amalgamation of the CCP and US foreign policies. Ice King might be a representation of dementia and Lemon Grab might be autistic. I don't think Lemon Grab is autistic, and if he's supposed to be, it's really a bad representation. So, in short, autism is a development disability caused by differences in the brain. Depending on who you're talking to, you might find some resistance towards the definition because autism is a spectrum. Depending on where you find yourself in the spectrum, you might be able to have a typical life like the majority of people on Earth, or you might need intense care because it's difficult to do anything alone. On top of all that, people without autism might also show some of those symptoms. So, very difficult disability to define and diagnose. Lemon Grab certainly shows us some of those symptoms. Specifically, the difficulty in communication, the reduced interest in others, as we can see with the subordinates, the higher interest in objects like the Play-Doh that Lemon Grey and Lemon White have, the repetition of phrases like UNACCEPTABLE! The resistance to changes in routine, as we can see in the episode The Mountain, where a simple crack on the ceiling causes him deep discomfort, as well as the unusual response to sound because Lemon Grab seems to enjoy disharmony and music, seen when Lemon Hole plays the flute chaotically. Just a small aside here, I like the band 100 Gats and Hyperpop in general. This is not me being quirky. I like to listen to this harmony and um, distortion, so to speak. So when I said that non-autistic people might show similar symptoms to autistic people, that's what I meant. Okay, carry on. To a certain degree, I understand where people are coming from when they think that Lemon Grab is autistic. Unfortunately, I don't think it was intended by the writers. Furthermore, unlike PB and the Ice King, we don't have much information on Lemon Grab, and the information we have is not that great. Also, every time he appears as a widely different person with the only through line that is weird. Nevertheless, it is a thing that people assume, so I have to ask, does Lemon Grab have autism? <coughs> Lemon Grab throughout the series is presented as an authoritarian loner with little to no empathy to anyone else, and he goes so far that it will torture his citizens until they either bow down uh, or die. This is not entirely his fault since PB made him that way and left him that way. When Lemon Grab says, <coughs> This is a quite literal statement. Also, when Lemon Grab finds something that makes him happy to a certain extent, which is observing people in their sleep, PB immediately scolds him for that and tells him, It's creeping me out! Notice here that it's freaking 
her out. She doesn't really care about the citizens. This is further reinforced by her eventual solution to the problem. She wants to send some of the citizens to the Lemon Kingdom to appease Lemon Grab because he has no one to rule over. This won't stop him from observing people in their sleep. So the problem is still there. PP is just not affected by it anymore. This plan of course goes horribly wrong and Lemon Grab starts torturing the candy people that were sent to him. The end solution is to make another Lemon Grab which for the time solves the problem but also makes it worse but we'll see why later. Looking from the outside in, PB is doing the exact same thing that Lemon Grab is doing on a much bigger scale. She is quite literally recording every single citizen sleeping and Lemon Grab is observing one single person at a time. In this case, Lemon Grab is even making the banana guards that have to watch the cameras happy cause their job is so fucking boring. Lemon Grab is not really doing anything worse than PB is already doing but alas, this is not a PB video. That video already exists on my channel, which you should watch by the way, because it's a banger. Also, subscribe to my channel with notifications on. Thank you. Anyways, autism being a very difficult disability to define also comes with this little quirk that it might exist alongside other disabilities like attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or simply ADHD. One of the symptoms of ADHD or ADD is hyperfixation, which in this case will be lemon rabbit being hyperfixated in observing people in their sleep. As you can already see, we moved away from autism to ADHD or ADD, a related disorder that does tend to appear with autism but not the same thing. Coming back to the story, PB sends people to the Lemon Kingdom and Lemon Grab starts torturing them immediately. One of the less common symptoms of autism is a low level of self-harm and in rare cases violence towards others. Most of the time it manifests in biting your own hand, knocking your head against the wall or hitting your ears because for example loud noises. In very rare cases the violence is directed towards others but those instances don't go so far to torture and most of the times are triggered because the individual is unable to convey information and so they end up expressing their distress involuntarily through a meltdown. If the individual with autism is able to understand and communicate, instances of violence are very rare to non-existence. Again, in this case you could say that Lemon Grab has been driven into this position because PB neglected him, but if we assume that Lemon Grab is a representation of autism, is the show trying to tell us that autistic people, if neglected, will turn to torturing and abusing people? I find it increasingly difficult to distinguish between what is supposed to be taken literally and what is supposed to be taken symbolically, if it was ever intended, which I think never was. I'm starting to see my problem with the whole idea that Lemon Grab is autistic. Mm. In Lemon Grab's next big appearance, we find out that PB, by accident, left the Candy People formula in the Lemon Kingdom. Once again, she neglects Lemon Grab and just sends him seeds so they can grow candy food for sustenance. This neglect leads Lemon Grey and Lemon White to start creating a bunch of other Lemon People just like their mother. Unfortunately, without seeds, they can't grow food and so all the Lemon People are slowly starving to death, including the Lemon Earls. Eventually, PB sends Finn and Jake out and they find out that the Earls have been creating a bunch of Lemon People. Amongst the Lemon creations is Lemon John, which is kind of the castle itself brought to life with the organs running through the whole building. The Earls give John the command to march towards the Candy Kingdom so they can eat all of them. Put a pen on that. Fortunately, Finn and Jake find John's heart, punch it, activating it and allowing John to finally develop empathy. The conflating feelings of having to kill candy people and letting the lemon people starve causes John massive pain. John, the true hero that he is, sacrifices himself offering the lemon people food but also saving the candy people in the process. Now, presumably Lemon John is also autistic, and since John is a technically Lemon Grab's son, and autism is partially a genetically inheritable disability, Lemon John could be autistic. The way Finn and Jake solve the problem though, is by kickstarting John's heart, which is often depicted as the center of emotions. Autistic people are not emotionless, though that's a very common stereotype. 
Also, they're not murderous cannibals. They less commonly express their empathy due to masking. That doesn't mean that they don't have bonds and they certainly don't need fixing so they express more empathy for others. Now, some autistic people might require education to understand how emotions manifest because it's difficult to understand social cues, but they can still feel things like literally everyone else. You could say that this whole thing is symbolism for Finn and Jake offering some level of tension to Lemon John, making him understand that the whole situation is better. Still, I'm not quite sure if this was ever intended. Surely, you can always make something look like something else if you stretch it wide enough but at that point, you're not relying on the source material anymore. Lemon John sacrificing himself after learning how to feel can be interpreted in many different ways, but some of them, if not all of them, do not represent autism very well. I do understand to a certain degree why Lemon John would be an interesting character to represent autism because at the end of the day, he's a true hero but you need to read the character in a very specific way or else the conclusion might be very bad. Coming back to the Earls wanting to eat all the candy people. Are the lemon people cannibals? As we later find out, they start eating the lemon candy, which is basically Lemon John's corpse. It's a bit weird since those lemon candy also seem to just be seeds, but one line of dialogue from Lemon Grab weirded me out really hard. When Lemon Mix, that's the revived Lemon Grab of the Coupe d'etat, has one of his episodes, he goes to the mountain of Matthew to destroy him with lemon candy. Here he says, These lemon johns are me. Just ignoring the fact that the Earls wanted to eat all the candy people, which is weird enough, they seem to be eating themselves. It's not much different from the candy people because they eat candy while also being candy, but specifically with Lemon Grab, there's a bit of a difference. Before we enter the Lemon Hope saga, Lemon Grey and Lemon White are playing together with one of their toys. One disagreement leads to a violent fight where Lemon Grey eats half of Lemon White. <clears throat> Once again, you could say that this is symbolism for how some autistic people might have some problems with self-harm, like hitting their own head or biting their own hand. Since Lemon Grey and Lemon White are basically the same person, it would in this case symbolize the relationship between an autistic person and oneself. Here the whole problem is that Lemon Grey quite literally attacks Lemon White and eats half his body and face so it's difficult to distinguish what, if it was ever intended, is supposed to be taken literally or symbolically. No, no, you do not understand. In the Lemon Hope saga, Lemon Hope gets freed by PB and Finn with the express purpose of teaching him to become Lemon Che Guevara. During the events, the Earls get in such a bad fight that Lemon Great eats Lemon White. If you want to know the whole crazy story about Lemon Hope and the Lemon Hope saga and what PB has to do with it, I have a video on that as well, which you should watch by the way. Also, give me money on Patreon and subscribe with notifications on, please. When it comes to interpretations, there is the literal lay of the story and the metaphorical lay of the story. Sometimes stories might not have a metaphorical layer. On the literal layer, there is the actual thing that is being shown or said. In this case, we have Lemon Grey first biting Lemon White and then eventually eating him. On the metaphorical layer, we have Lemon Grey and Lemon White representing an autistic person's relation to themselves. If overstimulated or unable to communicate with others, they might hurt themselves or others, in this case self-harm represented by biting. Where the problem arises is when we follow the story and Lemon Grape literally eats Lemon White. While Lemon White is still alive in Lemon Grape's stomach, which means he didn't kill him, on the metaphorical layer it's hard to understand what's going on. You could interpret that Lemon White is causing Lemon Grey to bloat, causing him deep discomfort or self-harm. But then we could also be implying something about weight as well, which is not something I think was ever intended. If it was, 
And it's a bad metaphor since there are unintentional implications. Also, the weight gain already happened before Lemon Gray ate Lemon White, so the literal layer would be fighting a bit with the metaphorical layer. As you can see, while you can interpret something a certain way, if it was never intended, the implications can be quite Awful. Ironically, a fair number of autistic people struggle with implications. That's the whole reason why tone tags exist. So, after Lemon Hope finally decides to become Lemon Shigevara and help his people, he kills Lemon Grape by playing beautiful music. In the process, also killing Lemon White. I think exploding is a very unusual response to harmonic music. You could interpret this once again as symbolism for how autistic people might be overly sensitive to certain stimuli, while a crass imagery it never Nevertheless, is a good metaphorical depiction of how it can feel to be overstimulated, but at this point, it's difficult to distinguish between the metaphorical and the literal layer. It makes me a little bit lost. After the whole Lemon Hope saga, we see that the Lemon Kingdom has become Lemon North Korea. Everything is centered around the glorious leader a Lemon Mix, and everything exists to please only him. There are several interpretations of this specific episode, one including accepting oneself for what they are, but I want to focus on how this might relate to autism. It seems that after the whole Lemon Hope saga, Lemon Mix has established a very strict routine that is executed the same way every day. One day when he goes to sleep, he notices a crack on the ceiling of his bedroom, disturbing his daily routine, and this is causing him deep discomfort. So he sets out to drown out the noise by going to the mountain of Matthew and killing him. Again, Matthew has several different interpretations, but the most common one is that the mountain of Matthew it itself is a cult of people that don't want to live anymore, and once they unalive themselves, their minds are joined in Matthew. Trying to kill the unalive cult is strange on its own, but it's the gates of Matthew that offer more insight into Lemon Grab's mind. At the gates, we can see three visions. One where PP gives the attention that Lemon Grab apparently craves. One where Lemon Hope makes a happier but more chaotic Lemon Kingdom. And finally, the past vision where Lemon Grey and Lemon White fought with each other and Lemon Grey almost ate Lemon White. He chooses to go into the gate where Lemon Grey and Lemon White fought, indicating that this is the most important desire of his life to fix the mistake that a past version of him made. Stepping into the memory, the scene changes to him observing himself and it makes him realize that he can't fix the past. The fact that he's violent and easily triggered is part of his being. You could interpret this as Lemon Grab coming to grips with the fact that he is autistic and the only way forward is to accept his disability and live with it. My problem with all of this is that the scene that is supposed to symbolize autism is the scene where he basically eats half of himself and at the end of the episode he kills Matthew. If Lemon Grab was supposed to be a representation of autism, it is difficult to distinguish where the symbolism ends and where Lemon Grab, the character that does fucked up shit, starts. Unacceptable! Hmm, acceptable. What? Unacceptable! 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 So far, I talked about the problems that I have with Lemon Grab being autistic, but why do people think that he is? Despite Lemon Grab being a smaller character in Adventure Time, he is very recognizable, especially because of his voice. Over the years, we have not gotten much good representation or representation at all of autism, and so understandably, everything that comes close to it might be embraced by the community without further questions. Well, and depending on how you interpret the story, he could be autistic because this disability is a spectrum and it can range from someone that seems completely typical with a few oddities and someone that is barely able to live in our society. As I've tried to show though, interpretations need to stretch and warp constantly to fit the mold of autism and it's difficult to distinguish between the literal layer and the metaphorical layer because I don't think it was ever intended this way. Again, to a certain degree, I do understand why some could see why Lemon Grab is autistic because he does show some of those symptoms. The problem arises when the literal layer and the metaphorical layer are at constant war with each other about this topic. Lemon Grab, at the end of the day, is a torturing tyrannical monarch focused only on himself. He is a horrible person 
person and he might also be a cannibal. For someone to understand the difference between what is supposed to be taken literally and what's supposed to be symbolic, they would need to understand autism first and then pick and choose what is supposed to be what. Otherwise, they might come out of this whole situation thinking that autistic people are horrible. I think it's a bit too much to ask for most people because autism is a very complicated disability and the majority of people have little to no understanding of what it is, how it works, and how it manifests. I mean, you guys are cool and all, but I mostly came back here so I could stop thinking about y'all all the time. I'll be back when I'm tired of being free. If I could make an armchair psychological evaluation, I would say there seems to be an underlying abandonment issues caused by his mother neglecting him his whole life. While Adventure Time is a lot of characters that symbolize real life things, if Lemon Grab is supposed to be autistic, which I don't think he is, it's a very strange representation of autism, which definitely does not shine a good light on them. Nevertheless, if you think he is autistic, more power to you, I will just vehemently disagree. And with that, subscribe to my channel, with notifications on, otherwise you won't see anything from me because YouTube sucks, giant doo-doo. Take care of yourselves and have a nice, wonderful day.